In this video, we will talk about how to multiply hexadecimal numbers together. So, in a base 10 system, which is just our normal decimal system, we have values that go from 0 to 1 to 2 all the way up, and they're all just numbers. But in a base 16 system, or a hexadecimal system, the numbers start at 0, then go to 1, then 2, and they go all the way up to 9. But once we hit 10, we use an A to represent 10. And then once we hit 11, we use a B to represent 11. A C represents 12, D represents 13, E represents 14, and F represents 15. So knowing this, how can we multiply two hexadecimal numbers together? Well, let's check out an example. Let's say we have DF2 times AB. How can we multiply these two numbers together? Well, we'll start just like normal multiplication, where we would say this B times 2. What is B times 2? Well, remember, B is equivalent to 11. So this is really 11 times 2, which is 22. Now, the trick is, if we're multiplying these numbers together and we get a number that's greater than 16, then we have to ask ourselves how many 16s actually go into that number. So in other words, 22 divided by 16, so some long division, how many 16s will go into 22? Well, just 1. 1 times 16 is 16, so we subtract 16, and we get 22 minus 16 is 6, so our remainder is 6. So we'd say 1 with a remainder of 6. Now here's what we do. The remainder is written under the line right here. And the whole number that we got, this 1 right here, is going to go above the next column. And that's it for that step. And then we're going to repeat it again. So we'll say, what is B times F? So let's erase this over here. So remember, B is equal to 11, and F is equal to 15. So we're really saying, what is 11 times 15? And then we have to add 1. So 11 times 15, 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 1 is 5. We'll put a 0 right here. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. So we get 5, 6, 1. So 11 times 15 is 165. And then we have to add this 1. So 166. So once again, this value is greater than 16. So we have to ask ourselves, how many 16s will go into 166? So we can say... Well, a little long division once again, 166 divided by 16. Well, 16 times 10 is 160, so we'll say 10. So 16 times 10 is 160, so we'll subtract 160. 166 minus 160 is 6, so that's our remainder, so a remainder of 6. And once again, our remainder is written right here, and the whole number that we got from the long division is written up top here as a 10. Okay, so let's erase some of this again. So next we have b times d plus 10. So b is 11 times d. d is 13. So 11 times 13 plus 10. So we get 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. We'll put a 0 right here. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. So we get 3 plus 0 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. And a 1. And remember we have to add this 10. So plus 10. So that's actually 153. So this number is greater than 16, so we have to ask ourselves again, how many 16s will actually go into 153? So if we do some long division, 153 divided by 16. Well, we know 16 times 10 is 160, so that's too many. So 16 times 9 must be our answer, which is 160 minus 16. That's 144. So 16 times 9 is 144. So if we subtract these, we get 9. So 9 with a remainder of 9. Now remember, we write the remainder, the 9, right here, and the whole number that we got from the division, the 9, is going to go in the next column. And notice there's nothing left to multiply here, so we just bring this 9 all the way down here as a 9. Okay, now we move on to multiplying the a's. So let's make a little room here. Okay, so on to multiplying the a's, let's first put a 0 right here. Now we have a times 2. Remember, a is equal to 10. So we really have 10 times 2, which is 20. And since this multiplication, this product, is greater than 16, we have to ask ourselves, how many 16s go into 20? Well, just 1. So 1 times 16 is 16. 20 minus 16 is 4. So we get 1 with a remainder of 4. Remember, we write the remainder right here, and we write the whole number that we got from the division into the next row, or the next column. So the 1 will go up here. Next, we can do a times f plus 1. So a is 10 f is 15. 10 times 15 is 150, plus 1 is 151. So we have to ask ourselves, how many 16s go into 151? Well, 16 times 10 is 160. 
so that's too many. But 16 times 9, that would be 160 minus 16, which is 144. So we can say 151 minus 144, that's 7. So we get 9 with a remainder of 7. So we write the remainder right here, and we carry the 9 over to the next column. Okay, lastly we get a times d plus 9. So a is 10, d is 13, 10 times 13 is 130, plus 9 is 139. So let's ask ourselves, how many 16s go into 139? Well, we just saw that 16 times 9 is 144, so that's too many. So it must be 16 times 8. So what is that? 16 times 8. We get 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12, 128. So we'll subtract 128, and we get a remainder of 11. So 8 with a remainder of 11. So remember that 11 is represented by a B. So we can write a B right here. And the whole number that we got from the division, the 8, will be carried to the next column right here. And remember, there's nothing left to multiply here, so this 8 is just going to come straight down and land right here. Okay, so our final answer is going to be adding these two rows together. So we get 6 plus 0, that's 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. Remember in the hexadecimal system, a 10 is represented by an A. So we can just write A. Next we get 9 plus 7, that's 16. So how many 16s go into 16? Well, just 1. 1 times 16 is 16, so 16 minus 16 is 0. In other words, we get a remainder of 0. So our remainder we write right here, a 0. And the 1 will be carried to the next column. So next we get 1 plus 9 plus b. So 1 plus 9 is 10. b is equal to 11, so we get 10 plus 11, that's 21. So how many 16s go into 21? Just 1. So if we subtract 16, we get a remainder of 5. So the remainder will go right here, and the whole number that we got, the 1, will be carried to the next column. And lastly, we get 1 plus 8 is 9. So our final answer of df2 times ab is going to be 950A6. And if you want, you can use a hexadecimal calculator to check that this is the correct answer.